สวัสดีครับ I'm JP m i s t a n t a Welcome to Phuket Extra, brought to you by PVCPhuket.com. So today is September 15th. It's the day that officials from Phuket Immigration Office told people to come back to extend their non-immigrant B visas. As of this broadcast, there has been little to no new information on what's to come. So here's a quick roundup of where we are concerning Thailand visas in the time of COVID. Firstly, the blanket visa amnesty for all visa types will end on September 26, and there's no official word that it will be extended. We've been here before, with the deadline just days away, and officials denying any extension will take place, only for them to turn around and grant an extension of the amnesty for all visa types. This time, however, they did say that the September 26 deadline was set. This is Thailand, and of course, as always, things are subject to change. In order to stay beyond September 26, foreigners staying on any form of tourist visa will be allowed to repeatedly renew their permits to stay for 30 days at a time after the amnesty ends on September 26, but only if you're in one of two groups. The first group are tourists unable to return home due to illness, in which case you need to apply at an immigration office and present a medical certificate to prove that you cannot fly. The second group that could repeatedly renew their permits are tourists who cannot go back home because of lack of flights or the circumstances in their home country, and these people must present a letter from their home country's embassy or consulate in Thailand requesting that the foreigner be allowed to temporarily stay in Thailand. It's unclear if you have to have a letter for each 30-day extension, but you do have to reapply every 30 days. Now on to long-term stays many of whom have non-immigration B or similar visas, which has an income requirement to be approved for a one-year extension. The COVID-19 pandemic has left many of these people unable to satisfy this income requirement. But back on September 1st, the Deputy Chief of Phuket Immigration, Lieutenant Colonel Udon Tong Chin, urged any foreigners at the time caught out by this requirement to delay filing their applications to renew their one-year permits to stay until September 15th, saying he expected Immigration Bureau in Bangkok to make an announcement by now. So far, as of this broadcast, no word on that yet. Stay up to date with the latest at thepuketnews.com. Rumors have been swirling after a purchase order for the Army was leaked to the press, showing the military is stocking up on rubber bullets, tear gas grenades, batons, and more riot gear for this Saturday's scheduled mass protests and march in Bangkok. The Army is denying that. The document, which looked like a purchase order and has already been dismissed by the Royal Thai Army spokesman, it was posted on social media on Monday night, although it did not have a specified date other than September 2020, and no signature from the commander giving that order allegedly. In the document, the Army is alleged to have tried to acquire 1,200 rubber bullets along with 80 tear gas canisters for the 1st Army area. But again, the army is dismissing the document. This Saturday's mass rally is said to begin at either Tamasat University's Taprachan campus or Samnamulwang Park, with plans to stay overnight, and on Sunday, march down to the government house to sign and submit a petition demanding the government step down. It's just the latest plans in the anti-government protests that have been led largely by the youth and began in July with calls for not just the prime minister and parliament to step down, but also for a new constitution and ending the harassment of political activists with rumblings of reforming the higher institution as well. Earlier today, Deputy Prime Minister Prawit Wong Samon said the government is prepared to handle the influx of protesters traveling from other provinces to join the anti-government demonstration this weekend in Bangkok. For more, visit thepuketnews.com. The Prime Minister has floated the idea of adding another long holiday, possibly in November, as a way to boost sagging local economies and allow people to travel domestically. Although suitable dates for the potential long holiday has yet to be decided, the Deputy Prime Minister, Wisanu Kraunam, suggested November, since it doesn't have any scheduled public holidays. The recent long weekend from September 4th to the 7th helped generate 8.8 .8 billion baht in tourism revenue nationwide, according to the Tourism Authority of Thailand, who added that just under 11 million cars entered and exited Bangkok throughout that time. Here in Phuket, during the last four-day weekend and earlier, earlier this month, the island welcomed 
some 15,000 domestic tourists, which generated 80 million baht in revenue. A crazy story now, that of former Deputy Commerce Minister of Thailand, Banyan Tang Pakaon, who has now finally confessed to the kidnapping and murder of the brother of the judge who was handling his fraud trial. This is quite a long story. We'll begin in 2015 when a car crash took place. It hit a tree. It killed a billionaire, Chu Wong Sai Tae. But the driver of the car, ex-commerce minister and former police officer, Banyan Tang Pakon, survived with minor injuries. It wasn't until three years later in 2018 that police took over the investigation and went over the victim's remains, which showed he was clubbed to death before the accident, leading police to believe that Ban Yin had his billionaire friend killed and then the car crash was set up to hide the murder and was also learned that the motive was to steal his 300 million baht of his friend's shares in different companies. This revelation also led police to examine the death of Banyan's ex-wife, who died in a similar manner in Bangkok in 91. Anyway, Banyan has been at Bangkok South Criminal Court the past two years fighting the shares transfer case, in which he allegedly stole 300 million baht, and the ruling was scheduled for this past March. But on February 4th, four men kidnapped the brother of the judge presiding over Banyan's case right outside the court. The hostage was a 70-year-old man named Widachai, the brother of Judge Banida Sakunta Prasut, and it's alleged that Banyin had tried to negotiate with the judge to release her brother in exchange for a lighter sentence or to get off completely, but she didn't budge, and the hostage was killed within days, allegedly. Police say they have evidence of the victim's death, the location of the burning of his body, and the fact that his ashes were thrown in the Chao Praia River, according to police. The 56-year-old Ban Yin was then arrested, along with four others, and while he initially denied the charges, just yesterday, he reversed course, pled guilty, and confessed to taking the brother of the judge hostage, even taking part himself, dressed as a Bangkok police officer, driving the car. He wrote in a statement that, while en route to their hideout, the hostage tried escaping and he was killed by his men, and the body was burned. It's a chilling story. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Is this a sign of the times? As a new micro school has been set up in Suratani province with 19 students, and it was all done when a group of parents came together, dissatisfied by the quality of education at public schools there, and finally said, enough. The little unicorn house in Suratani province is called a micro school, where students learn together in a shared space with only a tutor and or some parents to supervise and assist although professional teachers have been hired. It came together after 16 Thai families pulled their kids out of a local public school, thinking they can do better than schools and professional teachers there. Lessons and activities at the experimental school, the micro school, are focused on improving critical thinking, decision-making, and problem-solving capacities, according to a report on the Bangkok Post, with students able to learn a variety of skills like music, language, IT, and other topics. One lecturer at Chulan Longkorn University's education department said the micro-schooling concept has actually been around in developed countries where parents are unsatisfied with the quality of public education, but they can't afford the cost of private education. The lecturer said, quote, it's not surprising considering the quality of our school system and its constant failure to equip students with the skills needed for jobs in the 21st century. And if the quality of our skills is not upgraded soon, I think we will see more micro schools in the future. Perhaps this can lead to changes within our school system. For more, visit thepuketnews.com. Coronavirus cases in Thailand have now reached 3,480 nationwide after five new cases today. All of them were recently returning from abroad and they were found infected while in quarantine. 96% of patients have recovered and the death toll is unchanged at 58 since June 2nd. And that's it for Phuket Extra today, brought to you by pvcphuket.com. For safe, secure, and soundproof windows, visit pvcphuket.com. We'd like to thank you for joining us today. We'll be back tomorrow. Until then, stay classy, Phuket. Phuket's rapid modernization has made it one of the world's premier holiday destinations. Investors can still buy quality condominiums for as low as $75,000 and luxury properties can go all the way up to $20 million. 
condominiums in Phuket are a safe, secure bricks and mortar investment offering foreigners freehold ownership. Call or email Thai Residential, Phuket's number one trusted real estate advisor, to find your perfect Phuket property.